I grew up in the Engadine Valley, which is um, in Switzerland. It's famous for its beauty, and the most famous place is St. Moritz. Maybe you heard about St. Moritz. Uh, the winters are very long, so our favorite color is white. We have so many words for snow and sleds. School was only seven months, and five months was vacation. And during these five months, what we did was building tree houses. It was a very, very important time. What it is, is that later on in life, you tend to forget those moments. I mean, especially when it comes to passion. I was lucky that in 2000, 1999 to be exact, in November, I went to Niger. You know, like we people from the mountains, we don't care about this so much, being the sea. Uh, what we like are mountains. So I was drawn to the Sahara, I was drawn to the mountains in sand, and before I actually went there, I knew that this is the place I have to go. So by the time I arrived, it was clear for me, okay, this is the place I'm going to spend time. And things uh, evolved very fast. Uh, I got there at night. I arrived in Agadez at night, and in the morning I got up like most Africans, very early in the morning, left the only hotel in town, which was called Hotel de la Ire, and then I walked into a bazaar because the Tuaregs heard, oh, white man has arrived, let's make some business, right? And so they're famous for jewelry, the Tuaregs, and they wanted to sell me jewelry. But it was like before six o'clock in the morning and I said, well, uh, it's too early for me to buy jewelry, but I would like a piece of land. And they say, but problem. And they showed me, three men showed me, we walked through the town, one had like uh, just one leg. Uh, he was walking with a stick and it was drawn a crooked line through the city. I followed that line. and. Um, Outside of Agadez, on a hill, they showed me the land. The land was beautiful, was very pleased. Uh, they saw it immediately. They called the owner of the land. A man with broken eyeglasses, he came over and we dealt. Uh, the price was right. It was maybe 100 times uh, cheaper than Switzerland. And uh, so by nine o'clock it was my land. I made a drawing of how this house could look like. I had no idea, I'd never been there. So I made a drawing. And a few hours later the first workers arrived. With pickles and shovels and shiny eyes. And like I showed the drawing, you know, very proud. Wow, this is my building. And so they looked at it like didn't understand what it was because they don't read or write so like this two-dimensional drawing was worthless and I just threw it away. So um, what we did is we I walked on the sand to show the outlines of the house and he was and we started by 12 o'clock they started to make the wall. I'm always watching the sunsets in Africa, which is something for people who have never been to Africa, it is spectacular. I mean, it's very intense and it's very fast. I mean, in no time it becomes dark. So I wanted to build a house to watch the sunset. Uh, and it had to be higher than the trees. And when I made the model and showed that to the workers, they were just laughing and saying, il a perdu ses chèvres, which means he lost his goats. Uh, now, now he's gone. Um, and then, of course, uh, this big challenge was also interesting for them, because they wanted also, also to succeed and be the ones who build it. So, uh, uh, so we succeeded. And um, 
and it was a huge challenge. It was maybe even dangerous. There was no engineers. Uh, some people said, but how do you finance this? All this you don't have, okay? All that you don't have. Uh, so, so it's in a way much more intriguing and much more interesting. Uh, it's an adventure to do that. And since I'm not an architect, I need that. I want that. Remember when I built the Macaranta, the school, it was a matter of maybe 20 minutes. Okay, let's build the school. 150 children, okay, has to be this big. Uh, this is the land. Let's build something so they can sit on. And then afterwards it became 500, so it became something completely different. Uh, it went then from something that you design, like let's say architecture, into something which is social, because it is a school after all. I must say, to see the school, sometimes I go there, and to see these 500 kids sitting on the school, because they don't go to school, they go on the school. And just to see like the color, the movement, the noise, it is the best sculpture I've done. It's a kinetic sculpture. Uh, which moves. At the, uh, at the time in the woods, we would be so proud that we could actually survive in these houses because it's cold. Even in the winter time, it's very cold there. And to wake up in the morning and you had slept in there and a deer passes underneath. Those moments were moments you never forgot. So like you wanted, of course, that to happen to you again. In, uh, I think that was like the output for this, all these projects, and still is.